We're deep in the heart of the home of the Welsh Dragon, but they're not the only things to be charging around here this weekend. Hello and welcome to round two of the 2017 Aquacross Euro Tour, which has crossed back over the English Channel and finds itself here in Pembrokeshire on the far southwest corner of Wales at Milford Waterfront. Milford Waterfront is the flagship development for the port of Milford Haven, positioned on the doorstep of the Pembrokeshire Coast National Park and providing access to over 22 miles of the beautiful Milford Haven waterway. And this weekend is the section of that water right in front of the marina gates that will become the proving ground for the European races. And it's a very different setting to round one where the French sands stretched out for miles in either direction and under sunny Normandy skies provided the perfect setting for British rider Joe Harvey to tee up a hat-trick of wins. It was a masterclass of offshore racing from the Kawasaki rider as he lived up to his promise of smashing the Europeans and bringing something back for the Brits. In tough conditions, he and his Kawasaki excelled to land victory ahead of some very good opposition. On the last lap of the final race, Harvey Stamina saw him overtake Eidner to collect a hat-trick of wins in emphatic style. So once again, it's three races over two days. It's all about building those championship points, hoping to book yourself a place at the World Finals in Key West in December. And you'd like to think the conditions there will be very different to how they are here this weekend. But nonetheless, this is the course that the guys are going to take on here at Milford Waterfront. After the long blast from the start run, they then hit a series of fairly sharp turns before giving it full throttle in an anti-clockwise direction. After his masterclass in Normandy, Joe Harvey will be the man to beat this weekend. Dave Huddleston will certainly push Harvey all the way. Keep an eye, too, on Jordan Lambert, a rising star of P1 Acrocross. All right, so this is it then, the first one of the weekend. All eyes on Joe Harvey. Can he open his account here in Milford Waterfront like he did in Normandy? Let's go to the race start and find out. P1 Acrocross is back in Wales for a fourth successive year, but the first time on the choppy waters of Milford Haven. We're riding with Jordan Lambert, who's normally quick at the start and has often led races early on, but as in Normandy, didn't have the stamina to keep hold of the number one position all the way to the chequered flag. Has he been working on that since the opening round? There's plenty of spray being thrown around and Lambert could have top spot. He does have the advantage of the inside line going into the first turn. A lot of riders grabbing big chunks of air which is no surprise in these conditions. On board with Joe Harvey, now where does he slot in? Tim Batt and Joe Harvey appear to be contesting top spot with Russell Marmon just behind. These are very testing conditions, not only energy sapping, but visibility at a minimum too. Riding with Dave Huddleston, eyes focused, dead ahead, taking the impact through his forearms. Trouble six, the unmistakable Russell Marmon. Arguably the most experienced rider here today. He's keeping the leaders in his line of sight. No surprise to see Joe Harvey in the number one position, but perhaps surprising to see him with such a huge lead at this stage. It would be some feat if he can maintain this level of performance over race distance. The view from Jordan Lambert's Yamaha. 
Gaps now appearing as tiredness kicks in. Well, there appears to be no catching Joe Harvey. One one six is Thomas Batiste. He hails from Monaco. So he's travelled some distance to be here at Milford Haven this weekend. Tim Bat missed the opening round in Normandy, but he appears to be making up for it here with a very strong performance so far. Jordan Lambert is chasing as opposed to being chased as he was in France a few weeks ago. These conditions proving to be a real test of skill and endurance. And no one is looking more capable right now than Joe Harvey, who continues to lead. On board with Dave Huddleston. Powering across the surface, keeping his nose as flat as he can to keep his speed as high as he can. And Russell Marmon knows how best to tackle conditions like these. Still no change in the order at the top of the race standings. Joe Harvey still in command. And it has to be said, looking good to continue his winning run here at Milford Haven. Harvey negotiating his way through slower traffic. He's controlled this one pretty much from the off. And in this kind of form, it looks like it will take something special to beat him here this weekend. These have been very testing conditions, but he has mastered them superbly. His riding style, his body language showing his stamina, which is really is the key to success in this sport. Check a flag is out and greets race one winner, Joe Harvey. The Joe Harvey show continues in Wales, a stunning performance from the series leader. The opening race of the weekend ends like this with Tim Batt in second, ahead of Russell Marmon, Dave Huddleston and Jordan Lambert, and Joe Harvey on top. Fantastic uh, performance from you out there once again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it surprised us all, to be honest with you. Uh, it looked quite flat when we were in the riders' meeting early on, and uh, obviously sat inside the marina here, no wind, so we were expecting flat water and quite an easy race, to be honest with you. Got out the lock, the wind was blowing, and yeah, it was really rough and choppy, and yeah, like a right washing machine, to be honest with you. So, Tim, great performance for you out there in race one. You're liking this new Yamaha ski. Yeah, yeah, had a good uh, good performance, got the whole shot and pulled away. Me and Joe sort of led the pack by quite a big margin. Got to about the 25 minute mark and my hands were just, I just couldn't hold onto the bars any longer. And I was thinking, oh, who's behind me, who's behind me? But I held out for the full half hour and um, finished the motor in second. So I was really pleased to hold on to it, really. Fantastic stuff from Joe Harvey there. First race of the weekend, first victory taken. He's on fire. Good to see, though, number 666, Russell Marmon, back in the mix, charging at the front. Let's see what happens as we head out to the start for the next one. They've had a taste of action already, so looks are no longer deceptive as far as the surface is concerned. The conditions just as testing as they were for race one. Dave Huddleston on a charge as the pack powers its way down this long, long start run to the first turn. Already looks to be a two-way scrap out front, and even in these early stages, it's an amazing pace being set by the front runners. Dave Huddleston with a fourth in race one, following some podium placings in France. Here's the moment again when the marker takes a bashing. It's who else but Joe Harvey out front. But Russell Marmon looking to give him a run for his money. Tim Batt finds himself in third on this occasion. Behind, there's a big scrap going on for fourth with a number of competitors involved. The 
The view from the fastest man on the water, Joe Harvey. He's looking very good to continue his fine form and keep the winning run going. Russell Marmon has a quarter of a century's worth of racing experience behind him. And despite approaching his mid-50s, has to be one of the fittest guys in any form of racing on the planet. Tim Bat is indeed up into second place with Marmon shuffling back to third. But it's Harvey still setting the pace out front. We're riding with Jordan Lambert, fifth in the earlier moto. No one, it seems, can stop this guy. He's about to see the last lap flag displayed. He knows he's not that far away from recording another victory. Oh, dismay for Jordan Lambert, who's forced to retire. It's checkered flag time for Joe Harvey. 2017 is turning out to be his year. He has blown them all away again. Chris Leach is fourth this time with Aisha Rensink fifth, but the top three in the same order as they finished in Moto One, with Joe Harvey proving unbeatable. So, two races completed, and it's maximum points for Joe Harvey. Also, big points, too, for Russell Marmon and Tim Batt. Race two, same again. I wasn't really expecting too much from it, partly because the wind had eased off and it had flattened down a bit. But, yeah, I mean, that was yesterday. Race two, flat out the whole way through. I mean, I think there was three corners where he's eased off the throttle. Other than that, start to finish, yeah, wide open, yeah. And with one more race to go, it's looking pretty fat for the final one. Yeah, I mean... Fingers crossed, yeah, I mean, as long as the ski stays together. And yeah, she'll be on the podium, she'll be on the top spot, which will be nice. So a great second race for you there, Tim, and uh, getting Russell Marmon on the line, I think. Yeah, it's a uh, really, really, really good race. So probably the best race, one of the best races I've ever had, to be honest. Uh, didn't get a very good start at all. As they dropped the, I dropped the flag and I was sort of dropped into a, into a big wave and just launched me out of, out of the water. So I got a rubbish start and I followed Russell for the whole race. Kept pulling him in, pulling him in, and then we got some back markers, a little bit of traffic, and he was a little bit quicker through there and I was getting dropped behind. Here in Wales, the racing is really good, but the weather conditions are quite cold, which is to be expected, I suppose. But in any case, I don't think I had much chance in the two races. In the first, I had a lot of mechanical difficulties with my machine, which was very twitchy. And in the second, I had more problems at the end of the race. I'm going to give it everything in the last race. So Joe Harvey continuing where he left off in Normandy, taking the win there, but a strong challenge from Tim Batt now on his Yamaha. And who would ever bet against the mighty Russell Marmon, number 666 there, a welcome return from him, taking third place. Join us after the break when the Euro Tour action continues. Waterfront for the 2017 Aquacross Euro Tour, where pro riders old and new are battling out over three weekend rounds in France, the UK and Spain, and they're all competing for a spot at those world finals in Key West at the end of the year. And in the first two races here in Milford Waterfront, it was Joe Harvey, number 64, who was absolutely dominant. But there was plenty of action going on in the pack just behind him as well thinking with one more to go. Um, I just want to hold out, really. I need. I think I need to be top four to keep second overall for the weekend, so that's what I'm sort of going into now. Second or third, I'll be happy. Um, 
you know, hopefully my arms hold up. We had a warm up in the first moto, and now it's, you know, we're going out in fresh again today, so we'll probably get tight. We'll see how we get on. Fingers crossed that I'll hold out and uh, put on a good show. Well, after dominating the first two races, Joe Harvey from Wolverhampton in the UK is looking to see if he can do the same in this, the final one of the weekend. Can he make it three from three and book himself a place en route to the finals in Key West? Let's find out as we go out to the start. Waiting for the signal to go. And there it is. So for the third and final time this weekend at Milford Haven, the P1 Acrocross competitors put their race faces on once more. Russell Marmon will dig deep once again in a bid to oust Joe Harvey from the number one spot. It looks like Tim Bat who's setting the early pace out front, but Acrocross, of course, is a marathon, not a sprint. Jordan Lambert's race two woes hopefully behind him. He's looking very strong early on. Timbat leads, but can he hold on to his advantage? Bat is playing the go for broke card in an attempt to break Joe Harvey's stranglehold on this weekend. Joe Harvey did trail in the final race in Normandy, but came through on the last lap to snatch the win. It will take huge reserves of strength for Bat to prevent that from happening again. So far, so good for Tim Bat as he makes his way through the slower traffic. Don't look over your shoulder, Tim, as here is Joe Harvey. Oh, more trouble for Jordan Lambert who was on for what could have been his best result of the weekend. It's still Bat who leads. Can he hold on? Oh, that looks to be that for Lambert, who crossed the channel to be here this weekend. Tim Bat still has a sizable lead. But again, I ask the question, can he keep this pace up? Claude van Gensbeck from Belgium on the Kawasaki. Tim Bat counting down the laps and the minutes until the white flag comes out. Will his tactics work? Will his stamina hold? Can Joe Harvey come up with something spectacular? It's a long way to come not to race and Lambert keen to rejoin the skirmish. Whatever the issue was, it looks to have been corrected. And he is on his way again. There is Tim Bat, seemingly still going strong. Any aches or pains he may feel in his forearms, he has to ignore. He just has to ride through it. He knows that easing off the throttle could allow his rivals to close the gap. We've had five races so far in this campaign, and each and every one of them has been won by Joe Harvey. Is that trend about to be broken? The back continues to lead, but he has Marmon and Harvey still in hot pursuit and ready to pounce should he tire. Aisha Rensink is seeking another top five finish. Joe Harvey looking very rapid, and he has to be, as he has Russell Marmon still chasing him hard. They are second and third, respectively. Here is the man who refuses to let go of the lead. It's been a solid weekend for Russell Marmon. Bat having to Pick his way past the slower riders. Now is not the time to take risks and make a mistake.
So Tim Bat takes the checkered flag and wins the final race of the weekend at Milford Haven. Jordan Lambert recovered well to finish fifth behind Aisha Rensink with Russell Marmon third. Joe Harvey in second this time and Tim Bat the man in top spot. This is the picture then in terms of the weekend points. And as far as the championship, it looks like this. Following three races at Milford Haven, Joe Harvey within touching distance of being crowned champion. So, Joe, fantastic stuff. Another podium win for you. Sets things up nicely for Spain. Yes, per perfect weekend, really. I mean, uh, second in the last race, but it's not the end of there. Uh, won the weekend, feeling confident, over praying for a bit of rough water, and it's game over, isn't it? Great stuff, and uh, excited for Spain? Yeah, I can't wait, to be honest with you. Uh, it'd be really nice over there. Proper, proper sea racing. Let's go for it. Why not? Great stuff. Enjoy that last moment on the podium. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Well, a great weekend's racing from Joe Harvey once again, taking the top step of the podium here in Milford Waterfront. From here, we move to Port Bellas in Spain, and then after that, we are racing all the way to Key West in Florida at the end of the year for those world finals. And I'd love it if you could join us there. Until then, from all of us here, see ya.